So after checking with my uh, team in the re shipping and receiving department, I, I, I found that the cabinet for this particular build has arrived. Um, it's a sporty thing. It's kind of a, I don't even know what the official color is, but it's kind of an off-white, kind of an ivory cream with silver metal flake sparkles in it, showing that this particular customer has either good taste and or a sense of humor. Um, and it's got a kind of a weave, a small weave cane grill. Um, uh, I've already gone ahead and drilled the holes for the chassis mount right here. And now I'm going to install the reverb tank. Okay, they've got these cheeky little flaps which are just ideal for screwing. So we'll take a take a wood screw. I just if it's got an LED in it, I'm buying it. That's one. Bob Vila would be proud of me. Uh, or Tim Allen, who you knows? That one right there. And uh, just for better access. We're going to flip it up on its side, and uh, two more screws. Again, it's held down securely, but it's mechanically decoupled from the wooden cabinet. So, you don't get any of those nasty, resonant, feedbacky kind of sounds from it. And the springs are free to do what it is they do. Okay. And that's that. So, when we last checked with our heroes, we were getting ready to install a speaker uh, into this cabinet here, and due to a sudden plummet of blood sugar, we decided to take a break and have a couple of Korean hamburgers. So, everybody's chewing gum right now. I'm going to try not to be all smacky about it, but I'm not going to spit it out because Korean hamburgers? I mean, am I right, uh, Stephen? Okay. So... Let's just pretend like I don't have gum in my mouth, and let's continue where we left off. Um, we're going to go uh, a couple of things. We're going with a 16-ohm speaker because we have a 16-ohm tap on our output transformer, and we want to utilize all the iron that is available to us. And this speaker is from our good friends at Warehouse. Uh, just about everything I make gets a Warehouse speaker. They have a version of everything you could possibly want, and... Assembled in USA, not the People's Republic of China, but uh, the People's Democratic Republic of Kentucky, or whatever it is they call themselves up there. Um, anyway, nevertheless, here's the speaker. I have chosen for this amp the model ET90. higher power version of their ET65, which is available as a good cell model, the RG65, but this thing, it just, I mean, look at the, uh, that massive dust cap, it's got a ribbed cone, a lot of doping around the edge, it all adds up to a speaker that just kind of sort of hits the spot for me, so uh, I'm going to set the mic down and, and position this thing. Yeah. Don't try this at home. Uh, this should be done by hand. If I hadn't done this over 2,000 times in my life, I'd be using an acoustic screwdriver instead of an electric. Because you have to apply the torque evenly. You don't want to warp your speaker basket. And you just got to know the limitations of your tools. Now with the speaker firmly secured, we go with our Planet Waves speaker connecting wire. It's gold plated because that's what my customers deserve, gold plating. And uh, red goes to the positive side, black to the negative side. All right. And... Uh, I'll be back in just a minute with the chassis, and we'll go ahead and, and do the final assembly. Uh, mounting the chassis to the cabinet. We're going to attach the reverb cables. 
and the speaker cable. Now there's still a couple of housekeeping matters here. We still have to label all the jacks and switches in the back. But, and that's done with a brother P-touch. Because that's the level of technology we have here. All right. And the last piece. Okay. Now, um, we got the power switch, standby switch. This is the ohm selector. Speaker cable. Got an external speaker jack. This jack here will be for the tremolo pedal. And, uh, and they will all be labeled as such. Let me flip this thing up, and we'll take a look at the front. Hey, that's pretty snazzy right there. I mean, there's only really one thing left to do to make this thing perfect. Well, and there you have it, a day in the life of an amplifier, a day in the life of an amplifier builder. This is the finished product. I hope the client likes it. I put my heart and soul into every molecule of this build. But anyway, what you have here is a special amp built for switch foot. It's one of two. One with EL34s, one with EL84s. And there, the other one's going to be seafoam green, just as wacky. And this is some sort of, I don't know, we'll find out what the name of this stuff is called. Uh, it's a sparkle vinyl. And, and it's offered in many, many different colors. And this is the first one I've built in this color. And I think it's rather fetching. Oh, it's spectacular. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that's about it for now, Steve Reno. Cool, man. And uh, join us again soon as I'm sure, like I've always promised but never delivered, that uh, we're going to get back in the groove of doing these things. And, you know, uh, we're try to hold the fart jokes to a minimum and stuff like that. But... Keep it informative, but uh, signing off, it's Richard Goodsell. Rock on. Hope you loved it. See you, bye.